In this lesson, we'll cover learning target number two. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the properties of acids and bases, write their proper names and formulas, and ionization equations. In grade 10, you learn the definitions and characteristics of acids and bases. An acid is any substance that ionizes or falls apart to produce hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. For example, when you place HCl in water, it dissociates or ionizes into H pluses and Cl1 minuses. Because it makes H pluses, that makes hydrochloric acid an acid. Bases are defined as a substance that ionize to produce hydroxide or OH1 minus ions when dissolved in water. An example would be sodium hydroxide. Review the chart on the characteristics. These are properties or tests that can be used to distinguish an acid from a base. If you have a solution that is an unknown, what can you do to determine if it's acidic or if it's basic? In grade 10, you also describe the difference between strong and weak. Strong acids and bases fully ionize or dissociate in solution. It means that every particle of acid you put in the water falls apart. Let's show that in a diagram. Here's a beaker with some water in it. And if I put in three molecules of HCl, HCl is a strong acid. It dissociates 100%. If I put those three molecules in, all of them fall apart into H1 pluses and Cl1 minuses. Because three out of three molecules ionized, I have 100% ionization. Weak acids and bases only partially ionize. Acetic acid, the acid in vinegar, is an example. Its formula is HCH3COO, although sometimes it's written a little bit differently, with the H at the end. If I take three molecules of acetic acid, and put it into water, it only one molecule will lose an H. The other two acetic acids stay together. Because only one out of three molecules ionized, that gives me a 33% ionization. In grade 11, you won't be expected to know whether an acid is strong or weak based on its formula. We'll do that when you take grade 12. But you should be able to recognize acetic acid as an example of a weak acid. Ionization equations are balanced chemical equations describing what happens to an acid or a base when you put it in water. To write these, you break the part the compound into ions. You can recognize acids by their formula because they start with H. Some acids have more than one H at the beginning of the formula, but when they ionize, only one H plus falls off. For bases, you recognize them because they include hydroxides as the second part of the formula. For bases, 
all of the OH1 minuses fall off. You're going to need to balance the equation for base ionizations. In ionization equations, all of the states must be aqueous. Here are some examples. I know HBr is an acid because it begins with H. By definition, an H plus is going to fall off of this acid. Then I ask myself what will be left over. If an H plus falls off of this, I will have a Br that's left over. But the Br is going to end up having a 1 minus charge because it didn't just lose a hydrogen, it lost an H1 plus. And if you lose something positive, then you become negative. My elements are balanced. I have one H and one Br on each side. And so now I need to put AQ states on everything to complete this ionization equation. For aluminum hydroxide, I know this is a base because it has hydroxide ions as the second part of the formula. It will fall apart into an aluminum with a 3 plus charge on it. That's what's attached to the hydroxides. and all of the hydroxides fall off, so I put a coefficient of 3 in front in order to balance. And I include AQ states to complete the equation. H2SO4 is an example of what's known as a polyprotic acid. It has more than one H listed first, but only one H falls off. If I remove an H plus from an H2SO4, I will have an HSO4 left over. But because I lost a positive charge, the HSO4 will end up with a 1 minus charge. All my atoms are balanced, and I include 8 Q states to complete the equation. Acids have their own system for naming. If it's a binary acid, it's composed of hydrogen and a non-metal, follow these steps. Step 1, the acid name always starts with the prefix hydro. Step 2, you write down the root name for the non-metal. Step 3, you change the ending so it says ic acid. For example, HF. It's a binary acid because it contains hydrogen and the nonmetal fluorine. I start with the prefix hydro. I write down fluorine, but I change the ending to ic acid. I end up with hydrofluoric acid. The other type of acids are known as oxyacids. They're composed of hydrogen bonded to a polyatomic ion. If the name of the polyatomic ends in 8, then you change it to being an ic acid. For example, chlorate is a ClO3-1- on the back of your periodic table on your polyatomic chart. Because it ends in ATE, then we change that to an ic acid when an H is added to the front. So HClO3-1- is known as chloric acid. Now I can only add one H out front because chlorate is a 1- minus charge. You add enough H's to balance the charges to zero. You could also crisscross the charges with the H. On the other hand, if the polyatomic ends in ite, I-T-E, then you change the ending so that it becomes an us acid. Chlorite is a Cl-O2-1-, because it ends in I-T-E, 
When I add an H in front to balance the charge, it becomes chlorous acid. It's really important to remember and recognize that oxy acids don't have hydro in front. You can there are no changes or special rules for naming bases. You name them just like regular ionic compounds. Name the metal, then name the poly, which will always be hydroxide. There are a couple exceptions. One we want you to know is ammonia, NH3. It's an example of a weak base. Please memorize and recognize NH3 as ammonia. Try out the practice worksheet. For the first set of questions, use the formulas of the acids and bases to develop a name using the rules discussed in the note. The second set is the opposite. Using the name, reverse the process and come up with the formula of the acid or the base. Question 19 to 22 is writing ionization equations for the acids and the bases listed.